All right, so I hit record because last time I didn't hit record and I just let the YouTube app sit on my phone, it caused issues. <coughs> um, so I'm going to start recording now. It's a little, it's about 10 minutes early or no, five minutes. So I'm going to um, not do too awfully much here for another five minutes just because um, I'm going to give people to show some time to show up. Um... I've got my materials here, and I've got some examples of older mint tins, so you can see the evolution of these to um, my current tin, which is a different kind of tin. Um, so you can you'll see the evolution from the first. Um, actually, I think this is the first one to the most recent. I also added another light. Um, to my my setup here and hopefully what we're gonna find is that makes the video quality a little better because I've had excellent video quality with my phone um, up until my last video when I loaded it um, I did that live video with the rubber stamps and the story supply company notebooks um, but when I uploaded it to YouTube I watched it later the quality is terrible and I'm pretty sure it's because the room was dark. So now I've got two light bulbs overhead. Um, they're both 60 watt daylight bulbs or maybe they're warm white. I don't know. But there's a lot more light and things look clear. Um, and it looks like my phone is having a better time um, adjusting. Um, I think it just needs more light. So um, yeah, I'm just rambling until a few people show up. It's also kind of a crappy time of day to do a live video. Probably should have waited until people got home from work, but whatever. <clears throat> and it's my dogs being territorial over the food. I don't know if you could hear that or not. They're not really territorial. I mean, they're jerks. My dogs are not nice dogs. Well, actually the one who just growled at the other is the nicer of the two, <laughs> which is funny. So anyway, if anyone would like to listen along with the music that I am listening to, I've got headphones on since YouTube will slam me if I um, have live music or music playing in the background as I work, which is what I usually do. So I've got headphones on. I'm listening to Slacker Radio um, and the Bishop Briggs Station. <clears throat> so. All right. So let me tell you what you're going to need for materials. Obviously, you're going to need some mint tins. I looked on Amazon. If anyone has a link for the... Altoids Smalls Mini Mint Tins on Amazon, so that I can just buy the, I mean, I, I eat the mints, but it takes me a while to amass the mints, or the empty tins, to make them to sell. So people do buy these tins from me, and, but it does take me a while to get enough tins to sell tins to people. So you need a mint tin. You're going to need um, aluminum duct tape. This is the real deal. This is a thick aluminum on a with a adhesive and on a on a non a bot backing. And you just get that uh, in hardware stores. I picked it up at a this roll at a salvage store um, relatively inexpensively, but this stuff is actually quite expensive. It is um, the glue on it is um it doesn't melt in heat um so this is good stuff if you can get some of it get some you could just cover these mint tins in duct tape um i find that duct tape gets gummy and eh, gross after a while <clears throat> but so we're going to use that tape cut to specific sizes i'll show you what those sizes are and what your mint tin ends up looking like is very shiny, mirrored, and covered in a nice aluminum foil. So it goes from this 
to this with a little bit of work. Um, also, so you need to spray and clean out. I use a microfiber and just Windex to clean the um, mint residue out of <clears throat> out of the tins. They still smell quite a bit lot lot quite a bit lot like mint. Um, you will also need fun foam. If you don't know what fun foam is, um, you can get it in sheets at um, most craft stores as well as Amazon. Um, this is, I picked this up for 10 bucks. It's by Createology. Um, people use this for making, um, costumes. Um, you can score it easily. It cuts with scissors really easily. This is three millimeters thick. Um, you can get it in also 12 by 12 sheets. You can get it with an adhesive backing on it or without. You don't have to get the adhesive backed. I'm going to show you. Um, what we're going to do to cut, we're going to cut some of the inserts for this from the big roll. <clears throat> so you'll be able to see that as well. So you will, um, what else do you need? So I already told you, you need the aluminum duct tape. You need, um, microfiber cloth. You're going to use a microfiber cloth in a couple of uh, different ways. You're going to need a craft knife and... Some, this is double-sided tape. Um, get the permanent style. Don't get um, the, un, like, the re removable. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cut an insert for the top that looks like that. We're going to cut an insert that folds up and goes into the bottom that looks like this. And I have made myself... Um, some patterns and I like using a nice stiff this is a piece of old gift card um, there is a piece of double-sided tape stuck to one side of that piece of double-sided tape stuck to one side of this this is just a thick piece of cardstock this is a relatively simple process and it's gonna seem much more complex uh, through my description um, than it in fact is um, you're going to need to cut 10 inch, 3 8 inch high strips of that aluminum duct. You need two for each box. You also need, so you need two of those, and you're going to need two, two and a half inch pieces of the duct tape. These are, this is one and a half inches high by two and a half long. So you need two of those, two of these. You also need a piece of scrap. You're going to end up with some scraps when you cut um, the strips. So you need a piece of scrap that is about an inch and three quarters long. And you're going to figure out what we're, you're going to find out what we're going to use that for in a minute. So <clears throat> let me show you how to cover the tin. Um, so first, I always start um, oh, actually, let me show you the evolution of the tin before we get into it. So this is the first of the tins that, if you excuse the shaking, dogs just decided they want to go outside. So this is one of the first tins that I made. This is actually not covered with anything. I just stripped the paint off of it. Um, first you throw it in on a grill, kind of bakes the paint off. Then I used a power sander um, to remove everything. Sanded it down, and then I used... Um, fingernail brushes, um, buffers, buffing sticks to get it nice and glossy. And, um, it's gotten very de dented over time, but, um, it was very smooth and glossy when I first, um, did this and I did wax it, but, um, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of gotten a little rusty patina to it. Also, because this one is not fully lined, it only has a, um, piece of felt in the top, nice pe thick piece of felt, which kept things from rattling, but didn't keep um, the, because um, when you put this in your pocket, it does dent up, um, didn't keep the masterpiece, um, let me show you the masterpiece, screws from um, denting the bottom when I would put it in my pocket, the screws would um, kind of poke into it when I, when I close the top. So, 
that's one of the things that the, the um, fun foam stops it from doing is denting up so much. I kind of enjoy the dented look of this. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of focusing on it pretty well. Um, but so I really like the look of this, but it's a lot more work to strip the paint off of this than it is to cover it with the aluminum. Um, and then another one that I've done, I um, removed the paint from the bottom, put some washi around the sides, and then this is probably 20 layers of um, black fingernail varnish that I um, would sand down um, to get the smooth finish on it. Um, here's another, well, this is an older Altoid Smalls tin. Um, and so basically I just took the, fing the black fingernail polish and filled that in to get this. I think that might be upside down. Um, they've changed the, yeah, it's this way, I think. Nope, it's this way. Um, so you can see where the uh, lettering is coming through from where I sanded it smooth. So that's, that's a bit of the evolution of this. And then in here, this one does not have lining on the bottom, but it has does have lining on the top. Um, so this is a teeny tiny watercolor set, which I never use. <clears throat> so there's that. And I was sent by Michaela, who is a listener to RSVP, um, these, these pastilles, and, uh, they're actually quite tasty. It was like, um, having a sip of whiskey, uh, but so they were kind of nice. They were kind a bit of a funny texture because, you know, if you've never had them, they're kind of like a chewy gummy, but not, it's almost like a hard candy, but not quite. So anyway, so this mint tin, or this is a pastilli tin, um, I didn't want to cover this because I really like the orange and I, um, it's like a wood rings. So I liked that. I wanted to keep it, but Inside, I lined the top, and it's got a Pollux brass bullet and a masterpiece. So I can carry all of my sharpeners in this tin, um, and I keep a bit of a um, wooden skewer, I think this is actually a bamboo skewer, in the tin in case my pencils break, and then I keep a... Um, Descant pack in there to help keep things from rusting. So, um, then this is lined completely around. So you can do the same thing with any tin. You just have to figure out how to do it so that it'll work for you. All right, let me put those away. Um, all right. Once you figure out what tin you're going to do, I'm going to do a couple of things. So if you are looking to use a different size tin than just a mint tin, if you're figuring this out, I'm not going to give you exact measurements because um, you're going to do it your own way. But if you're figuring it out on your own, i got some pen testing stuff in this book. Um, what you will do is you're going to take your tin and trace around it and some of this is going to be trial and error so then what you want to do is use a ruler and figure out about how tall this is so this is 15 millimeters but if you look at it you've got the ring I don't know if you can actually see that on camera so you got the ring and the ring itself is about two millimeters high so you really want 13 millimeters to extend around so
So you end up making, and I'm using a pencil that's a little softer and darker than I would use if I were um, actually making a pattern on my own. Um, because, well, first off, it makes sense so that you can see it. So essentially, what I've ended up doing is making a larger square around the tracing of my mint tin. So the easiest way to figure out where you're going to make the corner cuts, the miters, is to extend where you traced already. And obviously, some of this isn't exact because I didn't do a great tracing. So, you trace your mint tin, extend out the sides by the height of the mint tin, then you've got to figure out where you're going to cut these. So, because to fit the inserts in, you have to cut out the corners because what's going to happen is these are going to fold up inside and make the liner. <clears throat> so, essentially what I've just done is you are going to cut along here, cut along here, and cut this out. You're going to cut these corners out. So it's not going to be perfect because you've got this excess where um, you've got the rounded corners of the mint tin. But we're going to show you how to deal with that. All right, so I'm going to cut. Oh, you're also going to need scissors. <laughs> I forgot all about that. All right. I'm just going to cut a big chunk of this fun foam, about the right height, but extra long. All right, so here's a fun foam until I just kind of hacked it off. So I'm going to start with the insert. Here's my um, template that I use. And what I do with that is I peel that off and you can see just a little bit of sticky tape on there to keep it in place and uh, close enough. All right. So you can see this wasn't exact when I when I cut it, and that's fine. So I'm just hacking that off so it gets out of the way. All right, so that's trimmed partially. I keep hitting the with my chair. Okay, so now I'm going to take my craft knife. And what I'm doing, I'm not, you're not going to be able to see it on camera. I'm actually extending the cut about two millimeters past that corner. I'll get an up close of it for you in a minute so that you can see it. Now you can see it. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to do that for each of those corners. And I'm just extending that. I always do the corners first and then trim these parts later. So by extending the corners a little bit into the body, what that does, wicket, go away. 
that's my dog, um, by extending those corners in, it allows the fun foam to flex a bit. So then I just peel that off. So you can see that the fun foam has little extra folds in there. It's going to let it flex a little bit more. So then I take my little waste paper and stick it on there. And I'm going to cut an insert for the top. This is a little easier. This is just kind of twist and trim. All right, there we go. That's cut to size. Peel it off. That goes into the top. Let me get this garbage out of the way. Now that we've got the inserts done, we can start with covering one of these. So there are a couple of things that I do that aren't totally necessary, but I think it ends up in a better mint tin. Particularly if you're planning on carrying um, pencil sharpeners in the mint tin, um, you need to seal up the hinge. And this is the probably most fiddly bit of the whole thing. Um, you can take this off, put a piece of the um, tape over the holes, then plug it back in, but this is actually easier. So here's a piece of that um, tin tape, real duct tape, take the backing off, and what I do, and this is why it's fiddly, is I take this and, because your fingers, my fingers don't really bend that way, so you take it and you stick it in there, making sure that it is actually covering the hinge holes. The holes for the hinge, you know what I mean. So you kind of have to tuck that up out underneath the rim and then rub it in place. I have a bone folder that I kind of seal that down with. It's hard to do that on camera. I'm just kind of using the point to make sure that that's all tucked in place. Generally speaking, when this is all done, you won't even see this, but there you go. Those are sealed up. And the hinge works just fine with it like that. Now, the next step is the wrapping around these edges. <clears throat> so I work this in pieces and there's a little bubble right there and the best thing to do is in advance smooth that out with your bone folder like so that way you can't see it so I peel off a couple of inches of the backing because I don't want to get too many uh, fingertips, finger prints onto the sticky bit. So, I then take this, tuck it onto the corner like that, and what I'm really trying to do is make sure that the foil tape is tucked into that rolled rim as best I can. And it just, until you really burnish it down, it you can really peel and stick it a number of times. You might tear it, but this stuff is actually really forgiving. So there we go, we got it started. And peel, stick, peel and stick, peel and stick. I'm getting some fingerprints on there, but those are going to all wipe off. So, 
not perfect, so, but not bad. And you take a bone folder and just kind of tuck it. All right, now, bit of a lip. I take the wide sides and fold them in first, pushing towards the corners. Obviously, if I'm not explaining this, it takes less time. Then you take the short side and you push that in and you're noticing, probably going to notice those little peaks there. Same thing on this side. I do everything all at the same time. Now this corner, I'm just going to take my finger and roll it. And there you go. Um, for anyone who's done any bookbinding, this is a lot like um, folding the corners when you're doing a leather cover or a fabric cover. Again, just roll it and fold it, roll it and fold it, and there you go. So, there's that. Now what you need to do, take your bone folder. I like using this side for this part, and I'm just going over all of those lumpy bits and folding them down. I'm just trying to press them into place. I'm actually using quite a bit of force to do this. Anywhere there's kind of a bump, you just take the bone folder, rub it over it. You can use your fingernails, too, but I find having the bone folder, you could use a popsicle stick or anything like that. I like the melamine for this because it doesn't scratch it. Um, and then there's a part the kind of finger hold and you press that in as well. Just smoothing out all of those lumpy bits. So you really want to get this as smooth as you can and it does help sometimes to just put it on a table and rub it. I don't like doing that too much because I'm shaking the whole table um, I do now have the camera on a different stand, so that is helping a bit without, um, so I'm not jiggling the camera too awfully much. But it's still not great. Alright, so I think that's pretty good. Basically, you want to you don't want any like pointy bits. So, then around the hinges, just want to take the other end of the folder and press that up in there. Now, I do open this up and make sure using the pointier end that everything is nice and flat. There we go. There's the bottom. It's about half done. So now I'm just going to do the top part in the same way. And because I don't have fingernails, this always takes a while to peel and get a couple of inches of it ready. And again, I start on the corner and make sure that that is straight. Same thing with this. You want to make sure it's straight and it's going to tuck in when I go um, back at it with this. And peel a little bit a little bit and if you're not careful I'm going to tear it like I just did but that does not affect the finished tin. You'll never even see it. So you just keep kind of wiggling it into place and eventually come back to the middle of the side. So I'm going to go through around and Obviously this can be a little fiddly 
and some people are gonna hate it so I got that stuck all right it's all stuck down so again press the long sides in just rolling it in then do the shorter sides and then do the corners one at a time and then I'm just gonna take my phone folder I'm gonna go around I'm just going around and around, making sure all of those little bits are smoothed out. So, now I'm going to sit it down on the table, and all of the things that I've rolled over, I'm not sure if you can see how lumpy those are, but they're little like folds and divots. I'm just going to take my bone folder, and I'm going to go over those. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way so that you can see it, but it actually takes away from the amount of pressure. I'm using a good amount of pressure to burnish these things down. And the aluminum is nice and forgiving. I mean, the aluminum just deforms um, and does what I want it to. So that's one of the reasons that aluminum tape is really great for this. I have um, some copper tape somewhere in my studio, and I don't know what I've done with it, but I think copper tape would look really fabulous on these so you do not have to be gentle with this So that's good enough, and I'm just going to give this a wipe with the microfiber because if I um, don't, actually, I'm going to get that one over that spot a little bit. I just sort of, um, like what I just did was I, I kind of felt the corners to see if there was anything that I felt was too pointy. And you can kind of feel, you get a feel for what. Um, is going to work and what's not going to work, what's going to um, cause problems when you put the other pieces on. All right, so I'm going to go back over that. Clean up some of the fingerprints. Okay, so now these pieces are going to get stuck on there like so I'm gonna have some lumpiness on the corners from this as well I'm gonna do the top first I'm just trying to get this on as straight as I possibly can so Again, I just lined it up and you rub it on with your thumbs. Now, I've got some excess on there. So again, going back to the craft knife. I'm going to trim off some of the excess because what you don't want is to have a lot of excess because that will cause lumps. So, then what we've got is this. And you're just going to use your thumb and thumbnails to go 
go around. All right, getting off camera there. And um, rub things into place. And then same thing, same thing I did with the, the last side. You just go over it with the bone folder, smoothing everything out. off camera again okay so if um to burnish this part i wrap my my bone folder in microfiber kind of keep it keeps it from scratching kind of although i let it peek out there so i get a little bit of a scratch oops oh well so anyway Screw that one up. Um, then you just repeat the process on the bottom. There we go with that. And same thing. Line it up. Press it into place. Again, rub everything into place, and then again with the bone folder, Just burnishing everything into place. Any edges you want to go over, any edges of the tape, I should say, and. Just burnish them into place. The more you burnish the edges, the less visible they are and the smoother they'll be. So there's that. And again, just go over it with the bone folder. So that's the exterior. Very shiny, nice and smooth. I like how it looks anyway. All right, so then next step is to put in our insert so this takes a little bit of finagling let me go with this oh the, the sort when um the fun foam when you first get it if you get it in a roll it does have a pronounced curve sometimes you have to work with that and this is came up pretty close so oftentimes what you have to do is fit it in and then trim one of the sides so it's not rocket science it's, it's just sort of making it work for you you kind of mush it into place and um, tell it what to do it really does do it so that's pretty close so I there's a piece that is popping out there so I'm just gonna pull that out a little bit and trim off a tiny little bit so you wanna you, you can always take some away but you can never add more so start with small amounts if you have to trim and go with that so there we go that's pretty darn close then what i do is i just take my fingernails um what's what little i have and poke things underneath the rolled edge and uh, this is another place where the bone folder is really helpful so it just kind of slides in there 
and you can force the corners into place as well. So um, this side's doing the same thing. So I'm just going to force that up under the rolled edge. And you can see it's kind of pushing out a little bit. But eventually, there we go, it went right into place. So that bottom is fully lined. Now what we have to do is put our top insert in place. I'm going to trim this just a little bit to make it a little smoother. All right, so what I have made is, um, this is technically, I, I believe you would call it a jig. This is an insert made out of old um, credit cards that uh, and gift cards that I cut a stack of them to the right size. And this, you drop in there, and I always push it towards um, the back there and into the corner. So that sits there. There's a little piece of um, double-sided tape that sits there. And that brings us to the next use of double-sided tape. What we're going to do with this, the insert for the top, is tape it in place. That's why you use the permanent and not um, removable. You could use a tape runner, I suppose, if that would work for you, um, as long as it's the permanent and my tape broke. Um, I've had some problems with this particular tape dispenser. It got warm and uh, has been causing problems because the tape has melted. So now I've got to restart the roll as the tape um, gets stuck to the inside of the dispenser and um, then is a pain in the butt. All right, so now we've got some tape applied to that. Then what you do is you take the top insert and you line it up in there and notice that the jig holds it exactly where it needs to be. So double-sided tape on the other side holds it in place then you just close the lid give it a squish and that sticks the um, tape down and there we go now the lid is um, in perfect location and this will always close so there we go so one of the things that you then have to do, so this will actually hold um, the pencil sharpeners, is you push just a little bit, you deform it out so that's not perfectly straight, and then you take this and you push it in. And that holds it shut very, very tightly. So let me show you what um, pencil sharpeners do fit in here. Um, so I have a masterpiece. What you're going to find when you first get one of these, if you buy one for me or when you first, oops, I just hit the stand. If you do buy one for me, you make your own, depending on what you use for fun foam, um, it will be a very tight fit at first when you put a masterpiece into it. And that's because of the screws poking out. But what will happen is eventually the fun foam will form to the screws and you'll have plenty of room. So here's the Kum Masterpiece. Stuff that in there and you notice it pops open. So squish it and there we go. The fun foam you're going to see in a second formed to the Kum Masterpiece. Um, so that's, that's one of the great things with the fun foam is that it does form to whatever you put into it. Here's an Alvin bullet. Notice there's no shaking noise, and I just tossed it. Um, it doesn't make any noise, so it'll sit in your pocket quietly. Here's um, the Pollux, 
I was trying to remember the brand name. I can't remember. It's not Alvin. It's the other company. M and R. The Pollux. Um, I always put this one down like that. And uh, again, shake it. No noise. That is the great thing about one of these mint tins. If you don't line your mint tin, lots of noise. And the same with the masterpiece. Brass bullet. Tons of noise. And the brass bullet is the smallest of them all. If you pop that in the lined version, no noise. So um, just a little you know, proof of concept here at how well the lining works and keeps things in place. I'm trying to think of what other sharpeners I have. Uh, right here. Uh, this is a uh, little Faber Castell. Comes with um, the class packs of um, Crayola colored pencils. So again, I'm gonna watch. No noise. The whole reason for lining it is just so that it, you don't hear the noise of the pencil sharpener as you're walking around. You pop one of these in your pocket, and as you're walking, it's going to sound like you have a pocket full of change. You do one that's lined, and it's absolutely silent. So, I like mine lined. I carry around three sharpeners in my pocket every day. Um, this makes no noise at all. Uh, it's great. So, um, that is the basics of uh, lining. You can do it with any size tin, so long as you trace it and you figure out how tall um, the tin the tin is and how tall you need to make the fun foam. Um, you can start out with extra height and then trim it later, uh, but it does work really well. You can also cover it cover the tin with just about anything. Um, this one's fingernail polish and washi. This one just has the paint stripped off of it. This one I collected um, some sort of textured foil. I think off of like chocolates, probably like um, some sort of fancy stuff a vendor brought at, to work. And you know, it's it looks great. It looks it has a nice uh, wabi sabi look to it. Looks like it's been around a while. I could. Um, I don't remember what I used to glue it on there, but it w went on really, really easily. And, you know, you could really use pretty much anything and then give it a coat of clear varnish or nail polish and it would preserve it. I tend to, like these, I don't actually wax with anything or, or anything like that, but this one I did use just a plain, plain beeswax polish um, and it worked great. So um, that is how you can make your own mint tin. Um, I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to cover. Uh, I've got two. I'm going to cover another one. And I've got three more. I don't know, think I'm going to get to all of those today. Um, but what I... So, and then what I'll do is I'll have them on RSVP. I have a few people waiting for them. And... Um, then I'll put, if I have enough of them, I'll put them up on Etsy. And uh, so what I do is if you go to the RSVP Stationery Podcast Facebook group, there'll be a post that says that I'm selling some and they're $12. Uh, that includes shipping and handling. And I give you a package with this, no sharpener, but I include a couple of pencils and some of my notebooks that I make. So you get a random selection of things, and uh, usually it's a pretty good package, but, um, you know, you you uh, people have been enjoying that. So if uh, you are interested in buying one, keep an eye on the RSVP stationary podcast page, and uh, my I'll, I'll probably put some up on Etsy as well. And, uh, yeah, so also... Um, there's a subscribe button, a big red button. I think it's right there. 
down below the screen. So uh, subscribe if you want to be notified when I do little live crafty um, videos. Or um, sometimes I last night I did a testing and a um, opening of the Story Supply Company um, fall limited edition release. So if you ever want to be, you know, notified of those things, I'm also putting up my other podcast to YouTube called Manuscripting Pod, where I talk about writing and all of those fun things that I like to do to keep myself busy. So um, sub hit subscribe so you'll be notified when I do these live videos. Also, like I said, keep an eye on the Manuscripting Pod, um, not Manuscripting Pod, the RSVP Stationary Podcast and the Erasable Podcast Facebook pages, plus my Twitter. I'm original LC Harper over there. There'll be links in uh, the notes section for this video that um, will tell you where to go so you can follow me. And I pretty much put something up on all of my social media. Anyway, thanks for listening. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, head to those Facebook groups so that uh, you can continue watching this fun stuff. All right. Thanks. Bye.